This is Geekazine's special coverage of Ford, Forward with Ford, Futuring and Trend Conference in Dearborn, Michigan. Geekazine is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network over at techpodcast.com. If it's tech, then it's here. When the person comes into the vehicle after a hard day at work, they're thinking about what's probably maybe just as a hard day back at home. My goal is to give them a 20-minute vacation through their commute. Aww. So, so that's our that's our business. We're in the pleasability business. Um, the first thing we have to do in making an environment comfortable is make it quiet. Quiet is obviously related directly back to uh, quality. And um, when a person hears a vehicle that's quiet, they think of a high-quality vehicle. So that's in our best interest to do it. It's also related back to fatigue. If you ride in a vehicle that's noisy, your mind mentally is getting all this information and that is the fatiguing part of it. Your mind's automatically triggering on things like, is this a problem? Is the road surface changing? You know, am I going too fast? And your mind actually wears you down at the end of that, you know, long excursion in a loud vehicle. So our interest is to make it quiet. So what I'd like to show you today is technology that we have to help what we say is see sound. And that's basically we're able to identify with this ball where the source of a noise is so that the painstaking problem of identifying the source of a noise doesn't take up my time, but more so that I can identify the noise and then do the development work to minimize it for the customer. So the ball we call Pythagoras. And I think you might remember back to those problematic days in high school or college. Square plus B square equals yes, square. the Pythagorean theorem. Well, that's the basis of identifying the sound. There's 31 microphones in this ball, and they're all high fidelity microphones that are record at 44K, same as a, a CD, a, you know, audio quality CD. And then that is also in this ball is 12 digital cameras just like the digital cameras that you're snapping here. So what we do is we take a picture and then lay on top of it the sound field in a three-dimensional space. So it's a 360 degree picture laid out in 2D space and then the sound laid over. So if I could, I'd like to do a demonstration for you to show how this works. So okay? So I have to ask, are there any musicians here? Yeah. Here's a musician. Obviously you know what this is. It's a metronome. The curse of all musicians, right? Yeah. If I could ask you to hold that, then uh, I would be able to pick that out with the uh, um, noise vision system in a little bit of a demo. So what we can do is we'll go to acquisition mode and start acquiring the data. And what you see here is just a view graph of the 31 microphones that are taking measurements right now as we speak. So you can see the the direct pulsing as well as you can also see my voice. So then we'll make a measurement by just saying record. And with this, we'll take three or four seconds of measurement. And this is where I ask you to stand and smile because you're getting your picture taken. So, so it's clocking through the uh, 12 different cameras. There's four cameras along the upper portion, which we call the upper hemisphere. And then there's four cameras along the equator. And then there's four cameras on the lower hemisphere. And so what that does, Jeff, would you mind if I shut that off? This is one of those sounds we don't want in our car. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and so what it does then is we generate a picture that looks like this. And this would be the upper hemisphere showing the, you know, the, you know, from about, uh, 60 degrees off of center up and then six degrees down and then the 120 in between goes there so we'll uh now from there we'll go into the analysis mode i apologize i've turned my back so i can see the screen the first thing we'd like to do is pick out a portion of the sound that we want to analyze and so the easiest way to do that is just by listening to it and with this so you can see these little blips here were probably my voice talking you know, as you can hear it and see it. So the areas of interest to us, so let me explain, this is the sound that was measured and then this was the time at which we measured it over, you know, the eight seconds of time 
So the, the blips were probably interested in this time to amplitudes uh, graph are these blips here. And we can take a look at this and zoom in just on one of them and, and play that. Oops, I picked a little bit farther than I need to. And so there's the, there's the click from the metronome. We'll add this as an event and then we'll do the analysis. And so I'll set a specific frequency range here from going like from 200 to 2000 hertz. And it's doing all the calculations for all the different microphones within the room to come up and say, we just found that piece and it's saying from here. And then we can further expand it to see how the, how the sound is being generated away from it kind of like a thermal imaging, you know, remember you see like the thermal imaging of the, you know, of heat sources? Well, it's the same thing we do with uh, sound sources. And then through some technology that we've developed here internally, we can then also, with this model, eliminate that sound and then find out what's the next apparent disturbing sound. And so all this really is a means in which I don't have to spend too much time in the vehicle, but can do a lot of time in the, outside the vehicle analyzing to try and how to make the sound be eliminated. And in this case, like we had our metronome, if we can't do anything about the source, because that's part of the function, then we can put something on top of it, like sound package, that uh, the fuzz or the foam that's underneath your carpet or that's in the wheel wells, and then properly place that so that we can minimize the sound that we have. Hmm. Now the fun begins mm -hmm. because we got all this noise out of the vehicle. Now we tune the vehicle by putting sounds back in so that then it meets the character of the vehicle as well as the image of the vehicle. Like for example Mustang is a very distinguishable t sound that has that American V8 sound. We do that for all of our vehicles. We have a DNA that we follow to achieve a particular sound to match the best image of the vehicles. And we de determine this through doing listening studies with customers. So we'll ask the customer, we'll say, here's two sounds, tell me which one you like better. And we'll do this for a variety of different sounds, throw it all into a big matrix, stir it up in a pot with some mathematics, and it'll then rank order the sounds. Or the other way we'll do it is what's called semantic differences. And semantic differences will offer two sounds and say, how well does this match what the image of that picture is? So, so speaking of sounds... We'll turn it over to Pat. Can, <laughs> that's my... <laughs> I can draw your attention over here. So Tim Thank talked you, a lot about sounds that we like to eliminate from the vehicle, sounds that you don't want to hear. But there is a sound that you do want to hear, and that's the sound of your traffic horn. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Now, I think it's really important, too, to understand how people use their horns. And it's important to us because it helps us decide what's the right product to uh, make sure that's out there that's on your cars and trucks. So, you know, think about it. How do you use your horn? Never. Don't ever touch it. Only if someone cuts me off, if traffic's really bad. Or warm idiots who are drifting. Yeah, mm -hmm. or, you know, maybe you uh, happen to live in an area where it's completely socially acceptable to use your horn all the time, and so you do. Hmm. So what we did is, um, oh, sorry, so, so why is this important to us? Well, it's important to us to understand how people use their horns so that we make sure that we're making the right technical solution. And we are a global company, and we have product everywhere in the, in the world, so we need to make sure we pick the right horns for everybody, not just Dearborn, Michigan. So we've done some analysis, and we've looked at how uh, people use their horn in different places of the world. And here's just a couple snapshots of typical USA. And, you know, perhaps the picture on the left is very stereotypical of downtown, maybe New York, maybe Chicago. A lot of traffic, a lot of activity happening, but uh, probably not the constant stream of horns, maybe the occasional horn. And then you look at something like the picture on the right, where you've got southwest, wide open highways, uh, lots of space between cars. Well, probably won't ever hear a horn except for maybe a... Uh, honk at the wild animal that runs across the road or maybe the person who strays over into your lane. Now contrast that, oh sorry, one more slide here. Um, in kind of expanding upon that thought, we use our horn in the U.S. so little that there are some places in New York City where you can get a fine for using your horn. It's just not 
something that, that we use with anywhere near the intensity of someplace like China. Now, this is a, a typical picture of a downtown area in, in China, and you see traffic, 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 lots of congestion. And not only is it very congested, but there's lots of different vehicles trying to occupy that little space on the road. Buses, cars, bicycles, mopeds, three-wheelers, people. Mm. And the way they communicate with each other is with the horn. And there's many places in the high-density traffic area where they're literally driving with one hand on the steering wheel and one hand on the horn, honking it the whole time. That's just how they drive. So what we've learned from looking at this is basically there's a pretty wide range of usage of the traffic horn and it's very influenced by the regional areas of the world. Um, you know, and the, tr the traditional use of the horn is to, to warn somebody who's drifting over in your lane or some other warning to someone around you, but also the maybe not so traditional, but definitely happens out there. You honk your horn when you pull in the drive, I'm home, to toot at the neighbors, you're going down the road, you're walking away from your car, did I lock it? So you're using that key fob. Or maybe you're walking back out to your car, where did I park again? Using that key <laughs> fob to find your car all the way out. I do. So all of these are factors that go into how we pick the right horn. So let's uh, maybe listen to some different sounds. Let me uh, uh, see what we think about. Would they make a good horn sound? <laughs> mm, yeah, probably not. Uh, a bird? No. Well, you know, we are very electronic. Mm, maybe not for a horn. Or, uh, it's probably not the right melodic sound. But it is important to us at Ford to pick the right melodic sound for a horn. So we've got a, a couple examples here. And um, this is a Fiesta. And the Fiesta uses what we call a single trumpet horn. And this is a, a dual trumpet horn, so the Fiesta is using just one of these. And the trumpet's important because much like a musical instrument, it's allowing the air to move and project out in a very nice tone. So that's a Fiesta. That's a single trumpet horn. Now the next slide here is a dual trumpet horn. It happens to be from a Mustang. That's a dual trumpet horn. So that's both of these working together, two different frequencies, got a nice harmony going on. Let's go to the other side of the globe. We've got a, a ranger from Australia. The ranger uses what we call a dual disc, so it doesn't have these trumpets. It's a little different sound. But the reason we pick a disc for them is, is it's a very durable horn, and obviously they have some very severe environments that they operate in. And then a little further, this is the India Fiesta version. And this is a single disc horn. So again, not quite as nice as a trumpet, but very good for the high usage that they have in India. All right, hope you're paying attention because now it's test time. We're going to play some horn sounds here, and you guess which of these vehicles pictured it comes from. All right, next one. Good guess. Mm -hmm. All right, next one. <coughs> model T. Right. Good guess. <laughs> really the model Texas. <laughs> so that's our story about traffic horns. This is Geekazine's special coverage of Ford. Forward with Ford, Futuring and Trend Conference in Dearborn, Michigan. Geekazine is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network over at techpodcast.com. If it's tech, then it's here.